is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Vile Files. I'm your host, Nick, joined by my producer, Rochelle. Hello. Hi. I'm very excited for this episode. Me too. Uh, Fortune Feimster. I'm going to say I this is my favorite interview you've done. <gasps> really? Yeah. I just thought it was really good. Um, For those of you who don't know who Fortune Feimster is, <laughs> you're going... I mean, she... I'm really like I feel like we got Fortune right before she was way too big to come on the show. Yeah, that's where I think you're wrong. I think she's already huge. <laughs> she's already a big deal. Yeah, but I think she's gonna be even bigger. Really, Stratosphere. Yeah, I think she's gonna be like one, top ten comedian in the yeah, world. Yeah, I could see it. She's so nice and yeah. normal and grounded and yeah, she's sweet. been around for a while and yeah, she's had a very successful career. Chelsea lately, but I think she's 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 so funny. Yeah, um, and she's just a great person. Yeah, uh, you'll hear in the interview just kind of talking about her life and she she is charismatic and you just <laughs> she just has a great soul and a great perspective. You just love her. Uh, I do. I truly love her. <laughs> she's so great. Um, and so I really appreciate her her coming and, and doing. Uh, this podcast uh, with us and yeah. um, has some great stories and, and shares a lot of wisdom wisdom and perspective about life. Obviously, she uh, talks about her um, her stand-up special, which in her stand-up special, she talks about coming out as gay and uh, what that was like and that experience, especially growing up in, in the South and, and people can be a little bit more conservative in that part of the country. Um, and then obviously that was personal to me as my young sister, Olivia, um, you know, came out and we grew up in a very conservative family as well. And so I thought it was just kind of a beautiful story and, and with a lot of laughs and, and, and fun. So I, I do hope you guys enjoy this episode. Yeah. And if you like her, check out her sweet and salty special on Netflix. Yeah. Uh, what's new with you, Rochelle? Me? Oh, nothing. Nothing? No. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Nothing is new. So... I have a couple of friends trying to set me up and I've been resistant, but I'm like, Why? because I've gotten set up in the past and then gotten to dinner and then be like, why would you think I would ever like this person? When you get set up, uh, do they uh, offer you pictures? No. They refuse? Yeah. They want it to be like. What the fuck? Because have you watched that new show Love is Blind on Netflix? I know I haven't, but I heard people really like it. Yeah, I actually really like it it too uh sadly but yeah there's an idea that like it shouldn't be about looks you know <laughs> whose idea is this i don't know what do you mean it shouldn't be about looks i don't understand that like give someone a chance uh, looks are a part of it but i think they're like you have been unsuccessful so far so maybe try something different well fair that's fair for all of us in terms of we have a way of doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results but this idea that you have you have to go and spend your time of which like neither of us lives are that important exactly. that we don't have a free wednesday night but whatever um and then you have to go and, and on a date with someone you might not even be remotely physically attracted to yeah um and uh, yes I, I empathize with you because setups just because someone well, why aren't you dating them? Exactly. You know, why are they so great? Why are you setting them up? This, and I'm sure they might be fine, yeah. but if they're refusing to show you a picture. It seems a little sketch. Yeah, sketch. Yeah. But I'm like, it's it's 2020, you know, I'm going to force myself to do it just to like, are you, you know. So you're going to go? Yeah. Without I, a picture? Yeah. Report mm -hmm. back. I will. I will. Uh, wow. Good. You know what? I will say, well, I do think it's bullshit. <laughs> I am proud of you. Thank you. I think if nothing else, it's good for you for trying something new and getting out of your comfort zone. Yeah. And at least my friends think that I'm dateable, which is also good. It's also really great for the show because it will probably go terrible. And then we get to hear about it. Thanks, Nick. Uh, no, who knows? What do they What do they say? Uh, w did they give you anything about no, this person? No, nothing. No qualities. And I'm no 33. I got a big list of do not move forwards you know what i mean big list of yeah no i'm, I'm aware <laughs> i don't know what's on your list i can only assume yeah it's like um you know nothing about him right not even like a personality two i'm getting set up by two different friends and you know nothing other than we think you should go out yeah 
who's running this? Is this part of some sort of show? Is this an experiment? Why do I feel like, are you on a reality TV show? You're not, did you sign an NDA? I wish. I'm excited. When I ask what's new, and next time you say nothing, I'll, rem I'll remind myself to keep digging dig a, a little, little deeper. Dig a little deeper. I'm not, I wouldn't do that. I definitely would not do what you're doing. But I'm, you're in I'm, a different echelon. I'm proud of you, though. I, I say you. that is, I think that's cool that you're doing it. Thanks, dude. Anyways, uh, should we get to, to Fortune? I can't wait, yeah. Uh, again, I, I, I think you guys are really going to enjoy this one. I know I did. We, we want to thank Fortune for coming on. Uh, don't forget to check out her new Netflix special. Uh, don't forget to send in your questions at asknickacastmedia.com for our Ask Nick episodes. Certainly appreciate you guys listening to that. And uh, next Wednesday, uh, we have another uh, exciting episode for you. Uh, Ooh, yeah. Mr. Drew Scott of the Property Brothers mm -hmm. and his lovely wife, Linda. Yeah. Uh, they got some new projects coming up, but uh, they were so uh, gracious to come and, and, and spend some time with us and talk about their relationship and how they met and uh, what it's like to work and be in love yeah uh, uh and spend all your time together um i really enjoyed uh, that one as well so uh you know check us check us out then we got some great stuff coming up for you guys so uh that is a i think that's about it should we do, we should probably just get to it now they're probably like wrap it up nick wrap it, <laughs> wrap it up anyways uh fortune themester everybody lending club lending club this is for the people out there like me who've got credit card debt it's hard out here once you get credit card debt it's hard to pay it off and then you know the interest rates are high they and are. then you start paying just interest rates so lending club is here to help you out, help you pay off your debt and get control of your finances. I know I start to feel really out of control mm. quickly. Yeah. And then you start feeling a little hopeless, like how will I ever be able to pay this off? So that's why I really love this concept. No trips to a bank, no high interest credit cards. Yeah, they're, uh, listen, as Rochelle said, uh, if you do get yourself in, in credit card debt, it can be a tumultuous experience and yeah. hard to, to navigate out there. So uh, Lending Club is out there, new friend of show. Helping people with these struggles uh, get their head above water, so to speak. Lending Club is the number one peer-to-peer -peer lending platform with over $35 billion in loans issued. That is a big number. Um, go to LendingClub.com slash V-I-A-L-L to check out your rate in minutes and borrow up to $40,000. That's LendingClub.com slash V-I-A-L-L. LendingClub.com slash V-I-A-L-L. All loans made by Web Bank member FDIC, equal housing lender. Attitude. Attitude. Attitude, attitude. sheets. Ooh, baby. My life has gotten so much better after I got my attitude sheets. Oh, yeah? Well, I'll tell you this much. Bamboo yep. is an incredible... Well, I mean, it's bamboo has been around for a while, but the discovery <laughs> to use it as material is insane. I, I remember, I've said this before, the first time I put my hands oh. on on bamboo fabric. Yes. And I my mind was literally blown. Yeah. And I, tell us more. It's so soft. It's also extremely breathable, which is good for me because as we all know, I'm a sweater. Uh, so it regulates your temperature <laughs> and it's also antimicrobial. We do know. <laughs> And it's better for the environment. It hits all the boxes. These are my favorite sheets ever. Why not try Attitude? These amazing sheets have a 30-day risk-free trial. If you're not fully satisfied, you can return your sheets for a full refund. They even cover shipping on returns. Just text FILES, F-I-L-E-S, to 64000. The only way to get 20% off your Attitude sheets and free shipping is to text FILES, F-I-L-E-S, to 64000, F-I-L-E-S. To 64,000. Fortune. Nick. Thanks for coming. This is so fun. I'm, I'm really excited um, that you're here. I, I get excited for all my guests. Well, I appreciate no, it. Uh, but I'm really excited <laughs> yes. for you. Um, you're like, you're blowing up right now. You're, I, I mean, I have a Netflix special out. You do? And people seem to be watching it. So I <laughs> like really that. Good. You're doing all these press tours. I know that you really saved the best for last. And you were. Listen, you I know, love you. <laughs> Right after you did Jimmy Fallon and, and Kirk uh, oh, uh, Col Colbert, 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 you're like, no, but I really want to do 
Topic I, Podcast. I have been following you uh, in your love quest <laughs> oh for God. a while. <laughs> I'm glad you. I'm glad you say love quest. I because at this point, actually, I was doing some press yesterday, and it's mm-hmm. just like no one really cares about me other than if I found someone. That's all they want to know. That's all they want to know. And so I just start fucking around yeah. with in interviews. But one time, I it's like I remember not to do that yeah. because I was it was like a People Magazine interview, and they're like, "So have you? Are you dating?" And I'm like, "My quest for love continues." <laughs> And they just that was the headline. that was the headline. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Fuck it, I don't care. But yeah, they. I, it's funny because you were like the bad guy, and then you became the good the guy, guy, and then they, uh, and then they were just like, well, we, we don't know if he's in it for love or not. <laughs> Let's just make it but, sure. <laughs> but you seem happily single, in my opinion. You're having a good time. I'm doing okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It really depends on the day. I wouldn't mind a Valentine. I wouldn't. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's got a few. Yeah, I'm sure. Right. This guy. <laughs> this guy over here. I don't know. We will we will see. I just love that the bachelor keeps putting like twenty five year olds on the show. Twenty five? That would be like <laughs> old <laughs> they're like this 21 year old is d- dying to find their future partner her whole life she's been searching like kind of 22 she's like i my whole life i've she's like i've been waiting for this person for you're 21 <laughs> come on you still live at home i just want to yeah i want to see the I, whenever they have a 30 like two year old everyone treats them like they're the grandma of the house yeah. and you're like oh my god you know it's like when a like a 35 year old woman gets pregnant and she goes yeah. to the doctor the doctor's like all right well you know we are <laughs> you? a geriatric yeah. pet pregnancy here yeah. <laughs> the, uh, yeah they treat women who are like over 26 the same way on the bachelor yes and the, and, and the 32 year olds are always like the ones that all the girls go to advice for they're like, uh, I know he doesn't like you, so can you help me out? Yeah. You're just in it for the free vacation. Yeah. You're basically the hired therapist. Out there, yes, so. you're friends with all the girls, and the guy's just like, she's cute. She has a nice personality. It's uh, like the bachelor will go up and be like, hey, I really need to tell you something. So should I pick McKenna? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about but, Angela? Yeah. <laughs> um but yeah i love your i love your new netflix special i'm thank you i like to think about i'm not a cheap laugh okay i'm not and i was watching your special when i dm'd you and asked you to come on yeah I'm lying in bed by myself oh that sounds sexy and i was crying laughing watching your special you were i really was oh my god like, i usually, love that usually when i watch stand up like i love watching stand up mm-hmm. and if i think something's funny and especially when i'm by myself yeah. i'm just like huh right right and that to me is a nice laugh yeah i was crying oh that feels so good it Thank was you. really it was really good you're it's i don't know it's a you're a great storyteller it's very relatable um, appreciate it i worked hard on it i toured that version of that set for like two and a half years really oh. <clears throat> yeah and then and then i wrote like three jokes <laughs> like three weeks before the show so it was a combo of things you know, but it was a uh, very autobiographical, and yeah, and uh, I was hoping people could relate to it from diff- all different backgrounds. It really was. I mean, I, I loved just how obviously you tell your story about coming out and mm-hmm. and realizing you were gay, and yeah. uh, you know, there was so much about that. Obviously, it's relatable to the LGBTQ community, but even mm-hmm. just anyone who's ever you know, felt like they had to find themselves yeah. or just any 20 year old who's yeah. just like, I'm not real sure what I want to do with my life. It was all just very uh, relatable in terms of um, ever, if you ever felt like you didn't fit in, yeah. you know, and it was always, it just came from a great lovable place. Oh, it, was, it, it, it was, it was funny and I thought both beautiful. Oh, I love that. That means so much. Thank you. Yeah. I was, I'm, I just wanted to obviously make people laugh, but I thought, you know, if I could get, and a couple meaningful things here and there uh, and trick people with heart. Yeah. Then uh, maybe it will, you know, because it's, it's kind of dark times right now. Yeah. Uh, you turn on the internet, it's always negative, And I just wanted a little, a little happy moment for people. It, it, and you really did that. It was, it was really great. Um, you know, I have a sister who was on my podcast with my parents who she's 18 now who, yeah. who came out as gay. Mm-hmm. And um, I grew up in a very traditional Catholic family. You yeah. grew up, you know, in the South, obviously mm-hmm. very traditional community. 
Yeah, obviously yeah. you tell a lot of stories about that. So it was yeah. it's not relatable for me, but it was really cool to, you know, hear your story about coming out and how your family accepted you. Yeah. And, and I think of, of people like my sister who, mm-hmm. um, you know, fortunately now it's, there seems to be more representation like you talked about, yeah. but it must have been it, how harder it was back then for, for you. Yeah. Um, I mean, it really makes a difference. I think nowadays people have no idea because there's so, so much more representation. Yeah. You can, like I said, go on YouTube and there's like a bunch of gay YouTubers talking about their lives and sh- talking with their partners and, and you see that. So it feels normal. But, you know, growing up in a town of 10,000 people and not knowing anyone who was gay and not being able to turn the TV on and seeing that, it, you know, you just you don't really even understand what gay is. And somebody somebody was like, uh, I don't know what she's talking about. Representation uh, wasn't there. Ellen came out. And I'm like, you, you're naming one person. You're naming one person who didn't work for the yeah. next four years. Yeah, when Ellen came school. out, she got shelved for four yeah. years. I'm like, uh, so you're only proving my point yeah. that it, you know, it, it didn't exist. And I'm not saying like, oh, let's go back in time and ch- you can't change it. That was what it was, but that is what uh, molded me mm-hmm. into, you know, trying all these other things. I'm going to try to be this person or this person because I think it's what my mom wants or what society wants. But And then the humor comes in me failing at doing those things because that's obviously not who I am. Yeah. Did you really uh, realize you were gay by watching a Lifetime movie? Yes. That's a, <laughs> that's so that's a true story. All, the whole special is all true. There is creative license with certain parts. Sure. Uh, but everything is based on uh, truth. But that was very true. I, I mean, it was bubbling up for me. Sure, I yeah. was living in L.A. at that point. Uh, so that come to Jesus moment happened then. It happened then. I was I was all by myself and really did watch a Lifetime movie about a young girl coming out and said at the end of it out loud, oh, my God, <laughs> I'm gay. <laughs> Thank you, Lifetime. And I never told that story for years because I was too embarrassed. Oh, it's the best. I thought, so I good. thought, what a lame coming out story. Like, everybody else is like, I made out with this hot chick at this party. And I'm like, I watched a Lifetime movie. So the com- luckily, the comic in me started mining it for, uh, that for is, laughs. That is so good. You talk a lot about in your special, obviously, your upbringing, where you came from. Mm-hmm. We have a ton of people listening to this podcast who are from the South. Yeah. Uh, a ton of people who are religious, mm-hmm. both uh, proud about their faith and still continue to be faithful. And, uh, and and a lot of people who, you know, Rochelle and I talk a lot about it. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we grew up very religious um, mm-hmm. and we've kind of expanded our points of view. And yeah. sometimes, you know, when you shame a Catholic guilt, we, we joke right. about that, or just shame from religion. Not, you yeah. know, it's like the struggle we have as we grow up outside of what, how we were raised. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, you know, what you talk a little bit about it on your special, but like, is that something that you, you know, you tried to work with or you interact with people or your family still to this day? And, and yeah, I mean, I made a uh, conscious choice to put religion in there because I think that people assume like, well, if you're you, you're either one or the other, yeah, you can't right? you can't believe in something or be religious and also be this other thing, and uh and and I I grew up like you like it was a part of your everyday life going to church was like you know going to the grocery store it was so common and I didn't want to ignore that part of my past so I uh not only talk about church but i film in a theater that also serves as a church church. yeah yeah, so good and uh it was uh you know the stained glass windows and stuff and so i wanted to embrace that part of who i was but also be like you know this is a was a part of my past and and it's a part of the culture that still exists in my hometown but also, like, look at us. They, these people go to church, but they still like me. Mm-hmm. And I can offer something to them, and they can offer something to me. And I didn't want to be the the person that's like, well, now that I'm gay, I, religion has no part in my world. I'm like, I believe in God, and yeah. I, you know, I want to be a, a have good morals and try to do the right thing. If you don't believe in God, that's fine too. I'm not here to tell you what to do, 
but I'm going to tell you how it played a part in my life. Yeah. And I might not go to church now, but I still want to be a good person. Totally. And uh, and I love that you said that too, where it's just, it's always funny how like we sometimes as religious people have a tendency of picking and choosing uh, what we like will shame and just yes. say like, well, if you're this, you can't necessarily, you, well, you go to church and, yeah. you're, and you're like, not, not so much now, but back in the day you go to church, but it's just yeah. like, uh, well, you st- you lie and <laughs> yeah. you go to church. What's, you what you cheated is, on your wife and exactly. you go to church. You gotta, you know. And I think that was my biggest problem with religion growing up was seeing some of the hypocrisy of sure. it. They would be so anti this, but then cheat on their wife or do whatever. You're like, what sin is bigger in in the grand scheme i think they're all kind of the same so why not we not judge people the truth is we don't really know we'll find <laughs> out you know <laughs> i know what if we're totally wrong you know <laughs> could and, be. and and god just really you know he has he has a really pet peeve <laughs> with people who are late he's like oh <laughs> i really hate i really hate that so much yeah. you're going to hell <laughs> um but really? I, that's that's your big <laughs> that's your big issue <laughs> But also, like, I wanted to, like, I've never tried to be the type of comic that only appeals to one type of person. I never wanted to be, like, a, just a gay comic or just a female comic or just this. I wanted to, uh, I want people who are uh, on the more conservative side to watch my special oh. and hope that they get something positive out of it. If you are it. conservative, you should watch it. Awesome. If you are a guy, like, that's it. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's when I was watching, I felt that. And, like, uh, so much of your story is about being from the South, being mm-hmm. gay. I, I'm not from the South. I'm not yeah. gay. But, like, it's still incredibly relatable. And it just, it just, it's a story from a person yeah. who talks about their experiences and their struggle through life and, mm-hmm. and with a comedic element to it. Yeah, because so. I think if a conserv- if people uh, who are, I, had, I have had a lot of conservative people watch it and reach out to me. And I think it's something that would be very helpful to them in sort of understanding things a little bit better. Because, you know, I am not hitting anyone over the head with anything I don't talk about politics. I'm very, that's a, a conscious decision because it's real divided. Yeah. But I do make jokes that uh, are on the lighter side, but in the bigger scheme, I'm saying to you, uh, being gay is not a choice. Mm-hmm. But I'm telling you that story in a way that's like so obvious. Right. You know, where, but I don't have to say to you, hey, listen up, you bastard. <laughs> It's not a choice. <laughs> I'm saying, here's a funny story. Yeah. I want to tell you, I came out watching a Lifetime movie. <laughs> people used to say, you can't let gay people watch gay content. It'll make them gay. And now it did. <laughs> <laughs> Look what happened. They were right. And and you kind of you kind of expose yeah. the ridiculous argument. Yeah. Obviously, a <laughs> Lifetime movie didn't make me gay. Uh, but uh, that's the fun part. It'll help you of right it. through. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it's so good. I mean, I can't, I can't sing your praises and your special enough. I thought it was oh, really, really great. And like I said, I'm not a cheap laugh, and I'm, I'm in bed just by myself, probably feeling fairly depressed, and I'm just like Aww. crying with laughter. <laughs> I'm like, this is so good. I do like picturing you in your bed, sliding into my DM. Oh, I yeah. was shirt off. I was sh- mm. shirt off. Yeah, looking pretty good. I did some push-ups before. Yeah. I'm just like, I am going to slide that, into her to That's DM. my bachelor I don't even dream. care if I just heard her talk about her fiancé. <laughs> yeah, her fiancé's over in the corner shaking her head right now. <laughs> she knows I love me some bachelor, so that was a fun DM to get. Yeah. Well, actually, we met for the first time on, on he- when I we both did Heather's yeah. podcast. Heather, and yeah. you literally, I met Heather you. Heather who? McDonald. Oh, nice. Juicy and, scoop, yeah. And she, uh, Fortune walks in and immediately Heather's running and jumping in my arm. <laughs> yeah, because Heather... I'm like, I don't know who this person is, but uh, I'm about to go do this. Uh, Heather likes the uh, the Bachelor, um, the the quintessential run and jump into yeah. the bachelor's so arms. Good. So good. So, Toddler jump. So like Nick's trying to leave and Heather's jumping in his arms. He's She's like, like, we gotta do this one again. I'm like, he's oh, like, do okay. <laughs> I know. But she... I was going to offer to jump in your arms, but I thought we just met. I'd, <laughs> I'd save it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see how this one all, goes. All of a sudden, Nick's leaving with his back hurting. <laughs> Nonsense. Uh, I I do have a bone to pick with you. Uh-oh. I okay. know. Uh, I don't like Hooters food. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's you, okay. How, <laughs> like, is it is it nostalgia at this point, or do you truly believe <laughs> that they have quality food? I, I only eat their wings, so I can't comment on... I, I mean, I don't think it's probably... Th- is it as good as other places? But when you're growing up, sure, your the cuisine <laughs> in Belmont, North Carolina, is pretty limited. 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 It's like we had we had uh, restaurants where they're they're known for their potato salad. That's what the cuisine was like in my hometown. So for me, yeah, Hooters was pretty tasty. Pretty tasty. I mean, nowadays I know enough. There's a uh, probably better wings elsewhere but it is more than the nostalgia, the nostalgia of it because i don't i don't even know like how is hooters doing we don't know are they do they i feel like are, not are people as well going there a lot i don't know i don't know because i wonder certainly not like in bigger cities i don't think it's as much yeah. of a draw but well, i think maybe it's still at other places well because well, it was popular when um porn wasn't ex- as accessible Right, you know, you couldn't, or like dirty pictures, you couldn't right. go on the internet back then and type in hot chick titties and see and see them. So if you wanted the boobies, you had to go to Hooters. Hooters was like so scandalous, like whoa, they're wearing tight shorts and pantyhose. <laughs> How old were you when you guys started going to Hooters? Pro- the the back that I can remember, maybe like ten. I think it, I'm sure it was before then, but I can remember from ten on. But it wasn't; it was never a sexual sure. thing for me. It, but for my brothers, that it was to them, it was a big deal. Like, whoa, we're gonna eat at Hooters. Are your brothers older? Yeah. So they were like teenagers. Again. Yeah, they were teenagers. What a so dream. Hooters was like so awesome, and I'm just like shoving tater tots and wings in my face be like oh (laughs) what (laughs) at that my sexual awakening hadn't happened but my my love of food had always been there (laughs) and then to consummate you coming out to your mom Mm -hmm. she decided to take you to yeah well i tell her i tell her at and this was also a true story I, i i told her i was gay at my favorite chinese restaurant uh over some crab rangoons and uh and then the um uh it it culminated in her i really didn't know what she was gonna say because she was is my mom's very chatty and for the first time in my life she was silent and uh looked upset and like eyes were watered and um and then uh she obviously didn't say in that moment let's go to hooters that was the comic in me okay. that brought it full circle. Okay, uh, but it, but she told me that she loved and accepted me, Aww. and I thought, well, well, what better way than going to Hooters? I think we did end up going to Hooters like a week later, uh, but we didn't leave the Chinese restaurant to go. <laughs> she immediately responded like that. Or yeah, did she take some time. She she let it sink in for a little bit while I kind of, we stared at each other for a little while. And for her, she said, she didn't, she didn't just say like right out the gate, like, cool, that's great. But she did say, uh, she was more worried that life was going to be harder for me than it, than it would have been. Cause she knew that, especially where growing up where we did, that it wasn't as accepted. Athletic greens, the best part of my morning. <laughs> You're not lying either. I know you um, I, I Listen, you guys, I love my athletic greens. I really do. Uh, I do use it every morning. Uh, it's full of all the nutrients and vitamins you could possibly want, plus probiotics, prebiotics. And if you don't know about probiotics and prebiotics, you need to educate yourself. Um, it's really helpful with your digestive system um it's got again greens uh and it's so simple and it tastes good i i it's uh i feel like i'm accomplishing accomplishing something as soon as i wake up yeah i enjoy it so it's just a powder what do you do you put it in you just put it in water put it in water yeah yeah yeah, i'm i i really enjoy the taste uh yeah me too and uh so i I drink it uh it's it's like the literally the first thing i do and uh i get a lot before you work out yeah oh nice Um, yeah it's i mean i wake up and I make it nice within five minutes of it's facing prob- the day. It's probably so good for your body to be taking that too. Wake like, up your uh, uh, digestive system. 
I uh, I like the travel packs, so I take I can take it with me when I go places. I uh, did that in New York. You over did? The weekend. Yeah. Oh yeah, you were on Good Morning America. It was. <laughs> Whether you're taking steps toward a healthier lifestyle, which I am, or you're an athlete pushing for better performance, which I was, Athletic Greens takes the guesswork out of everyday good health. Why not just try it? Jump over to athleticgreenscom v i a l l. And claim my special offer today. 20 free travel packs valued at $79 with your first purchase. That's athleticgreens.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Wannable. Wannable, you take a quiz and then they figure out your style. It is is style you up. Yeah. It's uh, fashion and convenience. Exactly. They charge you a $20 styling fee, but then they take it out of whatever you buy. So you end up not really paying for it if you buy the stuff. Yeah, it makes sense to me. I got my box of Wannable and it was stuff that was super cute, but I wouldn't necessarily have picked out. And I'm not lying to you. I got compliments every time I wore it. And I'm like, oh, I didn't pick this out. This is so depressing. Kind of sounds like this blind date you're about to go on. <laughs> Maybe this is, you know what? Rochelle, you should just not make any decisions for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, it was all really cute clothes. It matched my style because of the quiz, but it wasn't something You're I right, though. We do need sometimes to take risks in our lives, and sometimes it's helpful to have uh, an, an expert. Exactly. Who works for Wannable. Let you know that this is what's in, and this is what's trendy, and give yourself a shot. Exactly. And let people compliment you. Yeah. Well, it's great to know that uh, that happened for you. Yeah. I mean, I get compliments on my fashion all the time, but I do love the convenience of Wannable. You got athletic clothes, right? I got, I got athletic clothes from Monable, and I tell you what, I look so hot at the gym from Monable. Thank okay. you, Monable. All right. Monable has taken the challenge out of finding the right clothes for me to wear every day. They can help you too. Go to Wannable.com slash V-I-A-L-L for $25 off your first edit. That's W-A-N-T-A-B-L-E.com. Slash V I A L L for twenty five dollars off your first edit. Wannable dot com slash V I A L L. And also, I think parents, you know, they they envision what your life will look like to a certain extent. That you'll get married, have kids, have this traditional, like in the more traditional sense. And so she had to kind of readjust what that picture looked like. Sure. And uh, and, and for a little bit there was a like, are you sure? Uh, but but then ultimately she accepted it and and now she is the president of my hometown p flag so she's very gay friendly and and she's like the the gay advocate back home like people call her email her when like there's a kid like there was a trans kid over christmas that got kicked out of their house and she helped find them housing like she's kind of the that's awesome um the the liaison there in that area Must make you really proud yeah i mean i never would have imagined i never would have yeah. guessed that i could have never thought that would be her path but she just sort of <laughs> uh she she found it and and I, like i joked in the special it, she's like this is my thing <laughs> So <laughs> she's taken over. That's great. Yeah, I mean, I remember when my sister came out. I think that you kind of you said it. My my reaction from my parents was just mm-hmm. a very protective yeah. feeling of processing. Okay, we need to make sure that you are yeah. loved and okay. And mm-hmm. what are other people going to say? Is that fear of yeah. that protective parent? Like yeah. like when your kid is six mm-hmm. or eight, you don't really know how people are going to treat your kids. Right. And I think there's that fear. Did you know, like, did you have an idea growing, when your sister was growing up that she's I never gay? thought about it. I mean, she's much younger, uh-huh. right? So I've been out, like, I, well, on, when she was born, I was always out of the house when she was born. Right, so we never right. lived together. Yeah. It was, um, so I didn't, I didn't see her on a day-to-day basis. When uh-huh. she came out, it was kind of like, yeah, okay. Yeah. But I, I never wondered, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like, yeah. oh, I wonder if she is, or I wonder, right. like, does, I think maybe I need to have a talk and just say, hey, no matter what, I love you. Uh huh. No. And she right. just, and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I wasn't surprised, but I, I didn't expect it, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like siblings are kind of more like, yeah, whatever. It's some, some of the old school parents are more yeah. like, I don't know. And your how did how was it in your community when when it for when you first came out? Well, I didn't come out uh, until I was living in LA. Okay, okay, so I never experienced it like what it was like 
uh, growing up in a small town in the South, um, being out. I don't know that story because once I um, uh, once I came out, I'd been in LA a few years. I was doing stand up, and people were super accepting and uh, and very much like we love you no matter what. And then there's this fun like gay loophole uh, once you get on TV where uh, people in your hometown are just stoked you're on TV and they don't yeah. care that you're gay. Yes. <laughs> I know that person. <laughs> I was always supportive. It's like an Ellen loophole. We love Ellen. She dances. Right. You're like, well, you know, oh, so you're cool with her being gay? No. Ugh, what? She's gay? <laughs> they just don't think about it because they like her and they sure. like that she, what she does, that it's sort of this interesting loophole that, that you can get away with. Uh, which I'll take. Yeah. How do you, I mean, how do you, I, I don't, I'm not a, even, I mean, obviously I have a sister who's gay. Mm -hmm. I have friends who are gay, but I mean, to be honest, I'm not that in touch or connected with the gay community in terms of like how progress is going. Like, yeah. how do you feel like as, as a whole, as a country, when you travel, mm -hmm. do you see it, the, the progress more and more, or, I mean, or do you feel like we still have a decent way to go? I mean, definitely there has been lots of progress, you know? Gay marriage was a huge yeah. one, uh, though sometimes people get nervous that that could go away. I think every gay person is like, we have it for now, like hopefully, you know. Oh, you, you, so that's a real fear. Yeah, I think so. I think people, um, we just assume anything can get taken away sure. at any point, uh, only because these are newer uh, things that we were given and they happened under a progressive uh, administration. Sure. So once, you know, things start leaning more um, conservative, you don't know, like, can that be taken away? Yeah, I mean, you definitely see more representation in the media, which is nice. Um, but I, as a stand-up, do travel all over the U.S., and there are places for sure, we've experienced it recently, um, where we got kind of nervous, and they were in places you wouldn't expect. And we were like, oh, I didn't really... Like, it almost reminded us, like, oh, like, we have gotten further, but it's still, there's still yeah. that thing there. And there were a couple, like, after shows, there were a couple bars we went, we were like, we probably should leave. No one was, like, do, like outwardly doing anything to us, but you, f it's just a feeling you feel. And then, uh, well, one woman was kind of, uh, she was so, we went to this one place and she was so nice to Jax, and I was sitting down because uh, my uh, fiance is uh, f on the feminine side and this lady was so nice so helpful and then um, uh, Jack sat down I had to go to the bathroom and I walked through and I asked I didn't even realize they had interacted I asked that same lady a question and she was so rude to me and like not nice and I was like oh that was really weird and I didn't say anything to I didn't say anything to Jax about it and we we ate and then as we were checking out uh we were together paying our bill and now she was not nice to Jax, who was now with me and i go oh, oh. and then we kind of compared notes leaving <clears throat> i go oh she has a problem you know clearly yeah, yeah. realized we were gay and and so i go oh my god like i can't believe that's still a thing so it's just those little reminders that you think sure. okay we're getting better but we still got some ways to go yeah, that must be a lot to process. I mean, yeah. I, I I can't imagine, and and, and it's to get excited and mm -hmm. to have the progress, and then be reminded. I mean, I guess it's a good. Sometimes we are reminded not to, to take things for granted. Yeah, but like wow, it's wow. It, you just want to, you know, you just kind of remember to be diligent and sure. not sort of just uh, not that it's like I'm out there fighting, you know, every day. It's just like I. I all I can do is be myself mm -hmm. and represent who I am and and hope that that helps in some way uh, make it less of a scary thing for sure. people. Like, oh, well, you know, if she's living this life, she seems like a good person. Her partner seems like a good person. Like, if they're good, maybe this thing isn't so bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if that's, if that's my contribution, sure. I'll take it. How do you not like get angry about that? Like, cause you seem such like a, even like with religion, how do you not get angry yeah. about, about that? I mean, I think there's things we could all get angry about any, any of us. Yeah. Uh, and, and what good does that do uh, for ourselves? You know, it's that old saying like, yeah. 
uh drinking poison and hoping the other person gets sick yeah uh i've never heard that that's what, so that, good it's that was with resentment i think is the that, that's so true though. yeah it's like what good does it, it do? does nothing for you and so you just have to live your life drinking poison hoping the other person yeah i'm gonna steal that there you go it's an old saying i think it, like uh yeah res- if that's basically resentment is is is, the, is that and um i just think you have to try to find positivity wherever you can because life is hard and to let things bog you down or uh, of course i get frustrated at times but in the grand scheme of life i have a good life i get to do what i love people are um allowing me to to be a comedian and and have a good comfortable life doing that that blows my mind so for me to like get worked up that things aren't a hundred percent perfect you just you i don't know you'd wake up angry every day (laughs) and uh and so i just try to uh be grateful for the things we do have and hope that uh you know it changes and gets keeps getting better for everybody anybody that's an other yeah i mean you're you're really doing great things to help help make that happen Uh, too so thank you 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 talk a lot in your special I i mean through jokes about growing up and how again you didn't come out until later in life or Mm -hmm. even just process that you might be gay and so you were kind of trying all these things and kind of (laughs) jokes about it and i read that and you i think you even said in the special you went to an all-girl college (laughs) yeah was that like do you look back and go okay i've realized maybe i was like (laughs) why did i pick this school over yeah uh, a a non-all-girl school or do you do you kind of think about that or and was that experience what was that like it's funny because uh you i think when you hear all girls school you just assume like everyone's gaying it out just (laughs) like everyone's scissoring everywhere i what i (laughs) (laughs) what i assume is that parents are still like very like you need to like they're still not accepting that their kids might have sex that's (laughs) what i assume oh really (laughs) Uh, I guess my fantasy was different. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> I, but I'm down for the scissor. <laughs> I went there because uh, it. I got a. I got a scholar. A big scholarship there. So for what? I, uh, for academics. Uh, and you're, uh, you're a smarty pants. I'm a you're, secret you're smart. smart. Yeah. I I graduated summa cum laude. Yeah. I don't want to brag. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm a secret smart person I, that talks like I'm dumb. <laughs> um, <laughs> and That's a superpower, yeah, right? There. right? Yeah. And uh, I went there, yeah, for the scholarship. So it wasn't even I didn't even go because it was sure. all girls. That really played no part in it. It's good it for is stand up. It is. Yeah. It is. But it was fairly. It was an awesome school, and I loved it, and I so glad I went there. But it was um, a little more on the conservative side. It was a Presbyterian college, um, and uh, not a lot of like only one out person that I know of my entire four years of college. And, um, really she was not, it was not the place for her. And she transferred after a year. Uh, and you kind of, I think I probably, a part of me saw that. And I don't know if I consciously realized it, but I internalized some part of like, Oh, that person came out. This was a hard place for her. And she left and uh, push something a little even further down. Um, so for me, college was, you know, where, whereas college for a lot of people was a party time and like hooking up time. I was such a nerd. I was like- Hitting the books. Hitting the books. I played tennis and soccer. Uh, I was in the student body president. Uh, yeah, so I was like nerd. Were you popular? I was, I, I, but it was a small school. It was almost like a, a three giant sororities put together. That was like c- class. Like people went to class in their pajamas. Yeah. It was a whole, like places like that don't exist in the world anymore. But I also, but also it was, they didn't let you get away with anything. Uh, Cause Jax went to a big school in Michigan and like her teachers never knew if she was there. I had a teacher track me down once uh at lunch because i missed class <laughs> and y- yeah and it was because they knew like these yeah, it's like high school yeah right. but these i've been lucky with teachers my whole life they always kind of saw something in me or like cared a little more 
So I had a lot of teachers throughout my life be like, you need to do this. You got to step this up. You like, they were always championing me by making me work harder. And I really appreciated that. Yeah. I had a lot of teachers pull me aside in my lifetime. I, You're fucking it up, man. Yeah, like now, now that I think about it, I never really processed that before. But yeah, I had a lot of teachers have like heart to hearts with me. Aww. They all saw potential. I guess so, but that's kind of crazy. <laughs> well, and they, and now I'm I'm engaged to a teacher. She is a teacher. You, uh, well, she's a kindergarten teacher. Which is perfect for so, me. So yeah, you're you're happily engaged. I am. Uh, how'd you guys meet? We met it, at Chicago Pride, the gayest place of all. I love Chicago Pride. I've I've been to it once. Yeah, I went, even when I lived in Chicago. Yeah, I was. I had friends there, and my best friend from who I lived with for seven years in L.A. was living there at the time. So he would, at time to time would be like, "Come stay with me." And so I went to Pride and we met like right away. Who made the first move? Who who saw <laughs> her? The other? Her friend wanted a picture because uh, it. You? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, because the gays knew me from Chelsea lately. Okay. Oh yeah. And Jax didn't care who I was, <laughs> and uh, but her friend was too shy to go up to me by herself, and uh, so I took a picture with them. And I was like, this blondie over there is real cute. But I assumed that they were together. And then uh, they came back 15 minutes later and said their picture was bad. I go, sure it was. Uh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, and so I, I uh, normally didn't have a lot of confidence with women, but it gave me a, a false sense of confidence. <laughs> that uh, You just told yourself. It wasn't a bad she wants, picture. Yeah. Meanwhile, it's totally uh, blurry. This girl wants me. <laughs> yeah, it turned out it was like the worst picture ever. Uh, so it, I, we just like chatted and she'd been drinking a little bit. And uh, we kept running into each other all night. And then, you know, that's all she wrote. That's his yeah. That's and then you convinced her to move out here. Yeah, we were long distance for a year. A year? A year. How did you... We get a lot of questions from people calling about really? long distance. You, it's, uh, it's hard. It's hard. It's well, very hard. We were exhausted at the end of the year. What were some of the things? I mean, because obviously, like to your point, eventually you gotta you gotta do you gotta stuff. end the long distance. But yeah. a whole year, a like, whole how year. Do you, what were your some of your best things you guys did to make that that year last? We traveled. We usually one of us traveled to the other one every couple weeks, and uh, we tried to make each other's place comfortable for the other person. We would have stuff in a closet so it didn't feel like you were always in a suitcase. And um, and, you, and I guess it forced us to really like work on our relationship in a way that you might not your first year. Like you get to know each other more, you talk about more serious things. Uh, Cause at some point you have to, without really knowing what it's like to be together all the time, you have to make a decision are we going to break up or are we taking it to the next like, level? Okay. And you have to make this really big decision and one person has to make a the sacrifice, real sacrifice, the real yeah. big sacrifice uh, to move and change a lot of their life. And you have to know that th that's what you want to do. And it's scary yeah. for both people, especially the person moving, uh, when you don't have anything to base it on as far as day to day like you said no you can't there's no real knowledge of how yeah because it's going to change it doesn't matter yeah uh how much times you guys traveled yeah. or facetimed living mm -hmm. with each other on a day-to-day -day basis drastically yeah. changes the dynamic so yeah for sure and i think there's fear for both parties uh fear the fear for me was oh my god what if what if i'm ruining this person's life what if <laughs> They make oh, this. That's sweet of you. Huge, Think about huge that. Huge thing. Yeah, because you're like, because uh, she loves Chicago, loves her job. And I think, God, what if I'm really just screwing up her life by by doing this? And um, and it, it wasn't as much like, what if we like don't clean the house the same? It was the bigger thing, you know? And her fear obviously was even greater what if i'm leaving all this stuff and it doesn't work out yeah and uh so we drove 
her car and i think the whole time we were that whole trip we both internally were freaking out (laughs) 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 we we knew that we were freaking out once we had a big fight over a meatball sub oh no uh (laughs) that's when you know that you're freaking out we're fighting over a meatball sub (laughs) and um where'd you get the meatball sub it was in oklahoma Uh. and uh it was almost the sub that almost broke us up uh but you don't realize that what the fight is really about is this much deeper scary fear it's never about the meatballs never about the meatballs but we got to my we got to la and and went to bed and that so, and then that next day woke up and it there felt pe- it felt peaceful and i i think that then we were like okay we we're going to be good and then and it's been great it's been uh you've been out here four four years now and almost it'll be four years this summer she will have been out here and um we luckily like it worked out great we really blended in well together but she did ultimately have to make all these a lot more sacrifices and and so i'm very lucky that she did that thanks boo boo i mean hey listen (laughs) when it sounds like uh you are aware enough to know that i think i think sometimes people in relationships they, they make that big mistake of of not appreciating the selflessness yeah. of their partners. And you seem to be very uh, aware of that and, and appreciative of that. I try to be, she's definitely the one that has to do a lot. And I, uh, I need to step up my, my, my game. I mean, I, she's in the room and I'm looking at her. It's not as if we're saying this and she's like rolling her eyes being like, you know, you're full of shit. Like, <laughs> you know, she's pretty awesome. I, I hit the jackpot with her. And, uh, and I, you know, I, gosh, sometimes I get, I've always been so focused on this crazy career Mm -hmm. and I've known for so long that this is my passion and what I want to do. And, and I'm driven, driven, I'm very driven to the point where I, I wasn't sure I'd ever get married or have a partner because I just didn't think you could have both. I really didn't. A career and a. Yeah. At least at least be like um you know keep growing getting to the level of just you know growing your comedy and and your audience and still get to have a healthy relationship and so you know the challenge for me is to uh keep trying to work on taking the blinders off a little bit and you know recognizing my partner's needs and uh not being so like this it's comedy, comedy, comedy. Do you, the, yeah. do you like that uh, Jax is kind of out of the entertainment business? Um, I it, mean, it's nice that she's not an actress, you know, because I think it's a business that you're always being told no and there's so many rejections and you're always like hustling for the thing. And if if we both were like in a constant state of, Oh my God, this business, it would be hard, but she's the calm one. And, but she's been around it enough now that she understands it. And Mm -hmm. so she gives me a lot of advice and she tours with me. And so she's, uh, she's become very savvy in the, in the biz, uh, which is helpful. Yeah. Grounds you. so Yeah. Yeah. But then, you know, she's not like going to an audition at, you know, yeah, you aren't competing for the same roles. (laughs) Oh yeah, <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> I'll take you down, woman. <laughs> <laughs> and you are you are you are, have a very successful acting career as well that that is only blossoming even more. When I when I reached out, you were uh, filming a yeah. movie. Yeah, um, yeah, that's what can people cool. expect from you in that department? Uh, yeah, I started after Chelsea lately. I I did the I did my own sitcom with Tina Fey. And uh, that sort of opened up a lot of doors. It didn't. Get, it didn't get picked up, but it opened a lot of doors as far as acting. Like the Mindy Project then came, and and I've been lucky to be doing a lot of steady acting work since. Uh, but yeah, I just filmed a couple movies. Uh, one was with Jennifer Garner. Uh, it's called Yes Day, and uh, she was awesome. She was really really cool. Yeah, she uh, she's that type of person that has this huge platform and really uses it. Yeah, you know. And uh, we'd be on set, and she'd be like, "Yeah, I, I gotta, 
go for a second. You're like, where are you going? She's like, I got. I'm FaceTiming a an elementary school in West West Virginia. You're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm like, I'm going to get a granola bar. <laughs> and uh, so I was very impressed with how she uh you know is using what she has and uh yeah it's a family movie we did that will be on netflix it's based on a very popular uh, like a not children i don't know if it's a children's book but family oriented book and then i filmed a movie in puerto rico uh it's called chick fight and it's kind of like a it it's not based on fight club but it is a fight club yes. for women. Yes. So that was pretty <laughs> That's, crazy. I'm already in. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. We were filming uh, in abandoned warehouses in Puerto Rico where it was just because they wanted to look very gritty. Sure. And it was it was gritty. We all came home with like black lung because we oh, were. Oh, no. <laughs> we were like, uh, they were pumping in smoke in every scene. Oh. And, uh, I'm sure there was mold and asbestos uh, everywhere. And so we were all like, <laughs> and then fighting. <laughs> so, uh, but it was cool. It was almost like. Any special training you have for that? I mean, they send us videos of people fighting, no. but you're like. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> That's it. You're like, what, am, what am I doing with this? <laughs> yeah. uh, we each got to do like, uh, Malin Ackerman stars in it. And she did a lot, most of the training. Uh, the rest of us had to learn like one fight. And I was like, I can learn one fight. It's all like, uh, sure, just moves, you know. And it's block. more based off of like gritty <laughs> fighting, anyways. Like even yeah. in Fight Club, it's not as if they're doing right like, any type of ninjutsu or something. It's just kind of yeah. And they had like uh, six stunt women uh, who were doing the bulk of okay. the fighting, and they were like, blow your mind. They were like jumping off of things. They had a Taekwondo champion doing all these moves like their fights are gonna look amazing and i hate that they won't get credit for it like you know some it's then some actress being like <laughs> showing their face like that was me <laughs> <laughs> and uh <laughs> and i'm sure there will be you know i i, I don't know I, if people will take credit for those fights <laughs> Or if they'll if they'll give it up to their stunt double, but those stunt doubles were uh, amazing. That, that. There was yeah, oh, I don't yeah. Hopefully the movie is. You never know how a movie will turn out. Hopefully it comes together because those fight scenes could be super cool sure. to watch. Yeah, you never you never know. Yeah, I so, know. <laughs> like, hey, wow, well, I did my part. Yeah. Um, um what uh when's the the big uh, wedding day? Are you guys planning a big wedding, small wedding? We keep go we should figure that out. Everyone always asks us, we think May. That's our plan, May. Everyone's like, you know it's February already. That's so soon. I Wait, know. Yeah, May? Yeah, but we think we're just gonna have like a party. Okay. I don't think it'll be like a yeah, traditional wedding. Sure. I I am not. I mean, if I say this as a single person with no dating life, but I'm not uh, the wedding industry. Not a fan. You're not. Well, it's just such a waste of. It's yeah. It was. It's so expensive. Yeah. I mean, to me, I hope if I meet someone, they're down for like something chill. You and, wouldn't film it. No. <laughs> Come on, Nick. ABC. I don't. But I don't even for have. Love. I don't. Even, I'm not even in a relationship. Yeah. Uh, and no, I really. I would rather prefer something chill. Something. Chill. Uh, backyard. Yeah. Low key friends and family. Are you still hanging out with all the bachelor people? I have friends. Yeah. Like it's like anything else. It's you know being a part of that world. It's like any job you've ever had. Right. Like, you know, Jack. Like I'm sure Jacks. You were friends with a couple teachers, and the mm -hmm. and there are a bunch. You're like, I would love not to see you after work. <laughs> Um, and it's yeah. a lot like that. So I yeah. have a, a tight group of friends and, uh -huh. um, and then, you know, you meet a lot of people and a lot of it's acquaintances and yeah. you know, sometimes I try to give advice to the newbies, uh, who yeah. are you know losing their minds on social media. I love following all of the bachelor stuff and y'all's interconnected worlds and everyone selling hello fresh. <laughs> It's real fun. Yeah, they're a friend of our, our, our <laughs> I podcast. Love, I, yeah, I love, love Hello Fresh. Fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any favorite Bachelor people besides Nick? Besides Nick, um, found it insincere. But no, it okay. was very sincere. I have followed your whole journey, uh, Dean. I obviously y'all yes. are buddies, right? Yeah, Dean, uh, Dean's yeah. great. Uh, is he okay? By the way, <laughs> 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 did, he, did he like crash Some into beer? a mountain? He. Uh, 
he did. He had a serious accident. I saw him a few weeks ago. He is fine. Okay. I'm, he thinks he will fully recover in terms of like not having a a, a limp. He's in, oh he's in, man. He's in uh, um, physical therapy yeah. right now. I mean, Dean's a inter- yeah, I love Dean. He's an interesting guy. Um, he takes a little a, too many risks. He's a risk taker. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think he just kind of. This is who he is. Right. Like he kind of grew up doing that, and yeah. it's, it's in his nature. And uh, well, he needs to be careful. That one guy from The Bachelor did die from like hang gliding. He was another oh, adventure he was on guy. My, on oh, my that, oh, that yeah. yeah. Um, Eric. Yeah, I like uh, I like Caitlin too. You guys made up, right? Yeah, she's on my podcast. That's right. Her best friend. Y'all talked about the the what happened. What happened? Yeah. What happened? She was finally allowed to talk to me. Right. So. Right. So. Oh yeah, because they she broke up. Uh, she's still going strong with the Jason. Jason. Jason's a great guy. Yeah, he seems cool. He's super cool. Super cool. Yeah, and um, uh, who else do I like? Do 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 do. Rachel, she was Rachel's fun. Great. Do you like she's, grocery store Joe? Yeah, I do like him. Rachel he, has a R- Rachel has a big crush on. Crush oh, Joe. do you? Is he still with? He's them? newly single. So <gasps> they broke up. Yeah. Oh, I, I yeah, mean, that's Rochelle, not that. Rochelle's not sad. That's not that surprising. <laughs> really? I mean, they lasted longer than I thought they would. Great. But on Bachelor in Paradise, I was like, this ain't working out. Only because they seem to have very different lives. Well, on the show, they actually seem more or less disinterested in each other. Only yes. to like, be like, we should date. I don't know. Everyone else is getting more followers. I wonder if we know. I think they really had a, a, they had a, 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 a real relationship. But he, He's not. Is he staying in Chicago? Uh, he move out no, here? he moved back. Uh, I think that might have played a, a, a role. Move, he moved back to Chicago. He did. Yeah. The, I think Chicago is where point, he should be. To your point, different lives, yeah, right? and it seemed yeah. like um, they both had lives they weren't necessarily willing to give up. Exactly. I mean, the thing, the thing is, like, once people get, like, just finished the show, they're getting all this attention, and the thing, you think in your head, like, oh, I should move to L.A., uh, because now, sure. now I'm part of this thing. I'm and then, famous. And then as time goes on, you go, oh, I don't know if I like LA yeah. and this isn't that great. Right. And that, and I could do the opportunities that come my way or wherever Where I I'm was. Going. Well, that's the thing too. It's just like, what am I doing here? Exactly. You know? Yeah. Uh, if you don't want to be in the business, you yeah, know, then it's not. Like, yeah. You have to the immerse yourself. Place. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and Kendall's from here. Right. So she has has family here, so yeah. it, it's a little different. But yeah, it is a challenge. I mean, I I joke about it, but like the truth is, like, it's hard to know. Like that that's a problem sometimes with that world. It's hard to know your own sincerity. Right. Um. I re- I've, I've said this before. Even when I was in my first season, where you go on there, I'm highly competitive, uh-huh. and I like to be self aware. But there was this moment of like, I know I like her. Right. But I don't know how much is just. Ba- solely based off her or yeah. i just want my ego wants to know so, that she likes me more than right. like, i really couldn't i didn't i couldn't honestly mm-hmm. know for sure because you were immersed in this atmosphere and now yeah. even when you're out of that atmosphere you you know the followers and the people love you guys and every time you post a picture with your partner you mm-hmm. get like three times as many right. likes as it's like oh it's just you <laughs> It's intoxicating. It's just like, well, if I break yeah. up with you, what's, <laughs> no one's going to like me. They only like us. <laughs> <laughs> it's intoxicating. You know, so it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of a really messed up thing. And yeah. I think people are, you know, some, some, that. Yeah, some people probably feed into that more. Like, it becomes a um, more of a business than it is a relationship. Yeah. I, I believe yeah. that all the people in relationships, it's they're not faking it. You know right. what I'm saying? They They... Yeah, because they still have to live with that person every but day. But I think there's a challenge, especially in that first year, to, yeah. to know what is, why am I really, what, why, what's, why, why am I feeling, why am I feeling the way I'm feeling? Right. Um, well, and and, and this are, is right for me. And you're in a bubble yeah. while you're on the show, and so I can't imagine the pressure of like. Uh, they're like, okay, well, you know, at the end of the show, you got to propose, <laughs> and I'm sure that you're just like. Oh my God! Like I, it, what do I do? Like millions of people are watching and expecting me to propose. I mean, it's a crazy I'll, social I'll, experiment. I'll always have this vivid memory. I've, I've, I'm sure I've said this right before Andy showed up at my door to break up with me. Yeah. Um, I thought she was gonna pick me. I was really? like, I'm pretty sure she's gonna pick Aww. me, and like, yeah. 
But no, I remember I was in Dominican Republic and I was in the, in the, in the I was peeing. Yeah. And there was this little like, <laughs> like this little window. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to give you a really, I want you to, like, I want where, you to be in the room with me. Where was uh, Nick when this happened? And there's this like little window, like as if you were like in a jail, like looking out. And I just remember just like zoning out and just thought to myself, would it just be easier if she picks Joss? Because yeah. I was just like, how am I going to tell my friends I did this? Right. Like, how, like, how am I going to go back and be like, I'm in love. Like, I'm engaged. <laughs> and not like, have to like, how do I explain I'm they're not They're like, insane. you've been gone for three weeks. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> um, and I do remember when she showed up at my door, right? And like, she showed up and I instantly knew. And I, for about a millisecond, uh -huh. I felt relief followed by total heartbreak and shame. Right. But I remember being like, don't have to try to explain why i'm crazy right i right. do remember like um, they, it's a vivid it's a vivid memory yeah. of of kind of this out of body experience do you have any regrets from no i no? mean every day but also <laughs> like I've, i'm pot committed to this life i've i've built for myself yeah. there's no going back no right. i mean all, all serious it's like um it's it's given me a lot of opportunities and incredible access and it's allowed me to do a lot of the things i'm doing and without yeah. the platform the bachelor gave me i probably wouldn't be doing this and it gave me uh the courage to take risks you know uh -huh. i was selling software and i had a great job but i never felt like that's what i should have been doing and yeah. quite honestly i've i've became be, been able to tap into a lot of the uh, creative uh, aspects that i had when i was younger that i kind of stopped doing because i thought i should just work right um and it's been a lot of fun and i've worked hard to do this and it's had its ups and downs but yeah. um yeah i but i don't necessarily f uh, I, like i always say this I've, i'm not i don't wear it with a badge of honor i'm not proud i did it but i'm not ashamed yeah you shouldn't be yeah why hasn't ben higgins gotten engaged to why hasn't he's, he found love? love no he, he is he's in yeah. love yeah. I thought he would have been married a long time he's ago. He's found, I think he's found his person. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. around the corner, if you will. Yeah. Okay. She's like nice and normal. She, okay. She's like, she's, she's like the female version of Ben. She's the light. She's like, okay. He, he's got the politician's blood. He's, she's got the politician's blood's wife. Okay. Uh, wife blood. There you, you know? go. And she's a, she's a sweetheart. I thought he'd really be great. married a long time ago. But he kind of liked these kind of riskier women, I yeah. thought. Who? Like Lauren. Yeah. Like on the show? Yeah. That doesn't count. Oh, you don't really know. Look at that picture of you and Andy. You guys were cute together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were. I'm just saying. That was a great day. I had a great day. Yeah. I had. To, I, I grew up. Uh, I, I woke up yeah. that morning with uh, food poisoning. Oh, throwing up all morning. I can see it in your face. Yeah. Uh, do you guys still? Are you guys still friendly? Are we. Yeah, we're friendly. Yeah. We talk. I mean, Andy's Andy, and she's mm -hmm. always like, I never really know with her, but we are huh. very cool, and for, for for whatever reason, we might text each other for something. Yeah. Um, it was our five-year anniversary of me <laughs> calling her out on TV not too long you ago. You did call her and out. And she uh, sent me a photo of it, and, oh and she made a good laugh, and that brought a smile to my face, and she yeah. was like, happy anniversary. You and, definitely don't hold back <laughs> on uh, your interviews, which I appreciate. I'm going to take that as a compliment. You should. Uh, but everybody's very like proper like yeah. trying to say the right thing and you're just like no this happened <laughs> and uh what the fuck yeah i don't i don't know how to process this i don't it's just do you, um do you uh obviously don't think it would have worked out with andy or caitlin like it all no, happened yeah, for a reason yeah. i mean i it worked out the way it should have. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't have any regrets and there's not a person that I've dated while I've dated great women throughout my life. There's no, there's, there's no real, like someone got away. Right. And if someone got away, I never really got a chance to date them. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm content with my past relationships okay. having not worked I just out. Needed to make, that sounded cryptic. I just needed to make, away. if someone got away, who are you talking like about? You didn't date long enough. Is that what you mean? I mean, so, there's people in my life that there was like a connection, uh -huh. um, and for whatever reason, we never dated. Yeah, but I oh, always, I see. you know what I'm saying. I always, it's like I, I could allow myself to think um, they were the one that got away, but yeah. sometimes we glorify things that we've never really got to experience. Right. Like, truth is, I don't really know, and there's probably a reason why we never dated. Right. But you know, when we were talking or hanging out or felt uh -huh. the connection. 
um, and maybe they were dating someone or I was dating someone yeah. or timing, it's easy to glorify like, why can't we just, you know, right. be together or, or something like that. So Do you have some of these other bachelor chicks sliding into your DMs? Cool. Uh, Not like the ones that were the bachelorette, but like part of the sh- I have actively decided that I really don't want to tap into that. I'm, I'm friends with a lot of the women. I'm uh-huh. happy to help. I have not had any physical interaction with any girl from Bachelor Nation <laughs> since Vanessa and I broke up. Oh, okay. Uh, right. And that's been a conscious choice of mine. Oh, my God. How did I forget about Vanessa? Uh, <laughs> I, you're Montreal lady. Yeah. <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> um, it's fine. It's because you didn't speak French. Forgot to. <laughs> You did not. <laughs> I'm, just I'm just kidding. I'm still a little bitter. <laughs> yeah, I, I that that was an interesting match. You it was t- you too. I was like, I don't know about this. Did, you didn't believe in it. I didn't believe in it, but you know, you guys had something. At I, I was point. It, when I was very into her, and yeah. I was very drawn to her, and uh, she well, she was different from everybody else. She was, and she she was. A, I have a I have a bad picker, and nothing against Vanessa or the women I've right. dated, but I. You know, I, I think I have a type that's not necessarily great for me. Right, right. And I, we've she probably all, felt, yeah. f- uh, fell into that kind of bucket. So to right. Speak, you know. Well, you know, I like to be like everybody in America where we judge your relationship and decide what's best for you without yeah. us actually knowing. Uh, yeah. Or, you know, I don't think uh, I don't think my person showed up on, on that. That's a nice picture of us. Yeah. You guys were yeah. a beautiful couple as well. Happier yeah. times. Yeah. Uh, no. I but you know, it was not happy. <laughs> but uh, you, sm- you, you are smiled. you you knew th- that early on, like this isn't gonna work. There were some uh, early signs, yeah. Uh, shortly after mm-hmm. that, I, I I had some concerns, yeah, uh, about our compatibility, right? But I mean, every every bachelor, it's a it's a tough time. That's a tough, yeah. It's a tough time. There's a there's a, there's a it's not a best way to start a relationship. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. A lot so of added tension that you most couples don't have to do. Well, and you're being talked about everywhere. You're in magazines. Everyone's dissecting everything. It's tough. That's why uh Jackson and I are keeping it low key. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> America's <laughs> hottest like, couple. Uh, yeah, guys, guys, uh, no more questions. <laughs> about our, we're just trying to be normal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that. Before I let you go, you want to you get up for playing a little game with us? Let's do it. It's called Do You Know Me? Real simple. Okay. Rochelle and I are going to guess who knows you better. Uh, okay. The random questions that Rochelle picked out. All right. Uh, through a game called Do You Know Me? Don't answer the question out loud. Allow us to guess. Sure. If there's an anecdotal story you want to share to help answer the question, please there, feel free. All right. Question number one. Does Fortune have a turtleneck sweater? I feel like I've seen a picture of her in a turtleneck. Now, does she own it? I don't know. I'm going to say yes. I think she owns it ironically. I do have a turtleneck, uh, the, but it is for costume purposes. <laughs> I don't, I don't. Did you wa- dress up as the rock one year? Or did I make no, that No, I up? didn't dress oh. up. As, I dressed up as a, I didn't have a Halloween costume once. And I, I have a big chest of costumes from my days at the Groundlings. And so I, I pulled out all these costumes and it was a one was a turtleneck and uh it was a bunch of christmas it was a christmas turtleneck so i dressed as a woman uh who's ready for it to be christmas (laughs) (laughs) that was my halloween costume nice that's clearly a lazy costume but it (laughs) It, it works yeah question number two did the last text fortune sent contain an emoji no I think she's I think she's she's very sweet and she makes people feel at ease and she cares about how people feel so I think she sends a lot of emojis so people can feel okay or you're probably the last person she texted that's why you know we DM'd we DM'd I I don't my last do I look at my actual last yeah yeah no oh no no emojis I use them I use them a lot more on uh, social media because it's too hard to right back to everybody yeah. so occasionally i'll just be like heart or smiley face but i don't use them as much in everyday text okay all right i'm so bad at this <laughs> <laughs> i usually win yeah has fortune ever hooked up with someone 10 years older than her oh i don't think if she was 10 years older oh there's a hint 
Oh, wait. I didn't let y'all answer. It's okay. <laughs> I'm going to say yes. During her Chelsea Lately days, she was... Why do you go to that specific time Because that's time when period? she was like, you know, fresh out of the gate and people were yeah. like, I'm getting like Chelsea's her. a bad influence. Yeah. Just she like is. bringing all these older... Yeah, older come women. on, cougars. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Um, I really... There was one person th- that was older... Uh, but I don't know how I cannot for the life of me remember how much older it could have been eight eight to ten yeah. it might have been yeah nice. so let's just say yeah was it during your really, Kelsey lately days uh it was right right before it started ah, okay you're feeling yourself <laughs> has fortune ever gotten a spray tan I'm gonna say yes she what did go to she's from the south she went yeah. to debutante school. <laughs> Um, they didn't do it I, I don't know what goes on in debutante school so i'm taking a leap here but so, i feel like a, so many spray tans. like outward appearances and like you know i don't know i feel like it's or or either that or somewhere in her acting career and yeah. her costume yeah. necessitated a darker complexion i think no i think she draws the line at spray tan she's like i will not i will not I have never had a spray yes! tan. Yes. Never Woo! ever. Have you been offered one? Uh, no. <laughs> Weirdly <laughs> enough, people look at my me and go, eh, I think she's fine. She plays. <laughs> They're like, me and my t-shirts. Does, yes. it, does she look like someone who wants to step it up? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I went to a tanning bed. Oh, you did? Like what? three times. That's it. When? When you were younger? Back in college. Yeah, I did too when I was in college. I was like, yeah. I gotta see what this is about. And I'm like, this is weird. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. I've been too attending, but... <laughs> I, can, I can imagine. That checks out. I grew up in Wisconsin. I had a, you know, I got going to Mexico. It yeah. Was, it wasn't for vanity. <laughs> All right. I mean, sure. Has Fortune ever been to a nude beach? Not necessarily nude, but have you been? Yeah, sure. She travels. You know, she's been, uh, she lived in Spain for a year. Can we see, I don't, step have, it up to see if she's been nude at a nude beach? Oh, sure. I mean, I'm, I'm, I expect that if she has, she'll tell us. But I don't think, I think maybe that would make her feel a little uncomfortable. Uh, she stepped foot on a beach where someone was nude is all I'm saying. Okay. What's the answer? I have been to a nude beach in Greece. Oh, hell yeah. So many old dongs. <laughs> Lots it's of old dongs. It's not attractive, is no, it? No, it's never what never you Never great. Uh, no. I personally was not nude. Okay. Uh, this is not a nude body. <laughs> this is a lights off. No one look at me. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. But yeah, uh, you. Uh, I think that was my only nude beach. It was in Greece. And uh, yeah, I just remembered so many old saggy dongs. Mm-mm. Yeah. Because you know those Greek guys, they don't care. They're just Wrinkly, like, man. They're just eat, eating, uh, uh, I don't know. Olives. Olives. Yeah. <laughs> they're eating olives. Eating well, olives, showing you their olives. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Final question. Has Fortune ever missed a flight? Uh, yeah, she travels a lot. Travels she's on the road. Uh, it's happened. I think the only way she's reached it to the top is by being impeccable with her time. And so she's never missed a flight. Um, I have only missed one flight. Oh, but I did miss a flight. I'm very because I'm See? a rule follower. Yeah, yeah same. I may I drag her to the airport like an hour and a half too early constantly, and she's like, "Oh my god!" Like, <laughs> I guess we can sit down for an entire meal. <laughs> um, You're those people. <laughs> yeah, I missed a flight once. Traffic mm-hmm. in L. A. sucked, yeah. and uh, I got just uh, I got stuck. Uh, yeah, not getting my luggage checked in on time. Yeah, that's hard. Uh, uh, that, I would have made it otherwise. The only flight I've ever missed was, it was like a 6 a.m. flight. My alarm didn't go off and I woke up at 5, maybe like 4.50 or like 5 o'clock. Yeah. And I was like, fuck it, I'm still going to try. Oh, wow. And it's early in the morning, so there's no yeah. traffic. Uh-huh. But damn it, that was like one of the few times I planned on checking a bag. It was a longer trip. Yeah. And, I, and I fucking made it in time. But they're like, you have to check in for you if I maybe mm-hmm. in. And I got through uh, security before the flight gate closed. So yeah. I was like extra pissed because technically I made it. But they were like, yeah. nope, you, we have to bump you. And it was- Yeah, it was the bag. I was going to Austin for a yeah. show. 
and uh if i i oh i remember i tried to get it uh i parked my car where the you leave it and then you take a shuttle yeah and i thought man because you know the shuttle stops at oh, everything it takes so long so i tried to get a cab there was one cab i go can you take me he goes uh no oh. he's like this i'm like isn't that come on job <laughs> He's like, you just take the shuttle, and the but because I took the shuttle, I missed, you know, Bummer. bastard. What are you gonna do? Well, Fortune, I really appreciate you taking the time and coming. Oh, um, my pleasure. If you're listening, check out Fortune Special on Netflix. Sweet and salty. It's an absolute uh, great special. You will, you won't regret Thank it. Thank you. Oh, and I'm going on a a national, a new national tour. I'm going all over the country, so if you, you know, want to find s- out, follow Fortune. Where yeah. do people find you on social so uh, they can track you down? At Fortune Feimster, yeah. or, or my website's Fortune Feimster. But I'm pretty much going all all the big cities in the U.S. So, and it'll be a new show. Uh, that's awesome. Well, you are an absolute delight of a human being. Oh, really uh, you're I the really best. Appreciate you coming. It's been a lot of fun. So. It, well, I've loved talking to you, Nick. Yeah, thanks so much. Slide into my DMs anytime. <laughs> I will. <laughs> uh, thanks for listening, guys. Don't forget to send your questions at nick at castmedia.com, cast with a K. Feel free to, you know, give Fortune five stars on our podcast. Give them. Mostly because I want them. Give them to them. That's right. There you go. All right. We will see you back on Monday.